you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. A listener named Tracy writes in and says, um, I enjoyed your show when you talked about guys who are whipped. I agreed with everything you said. I have to ask you and your listeners this question. Don't you think that most men choose to marry bossy, sexually repressed, motherly women? The more plain Jane looking women? Women who don't like uh, oral sex, who have very little sense of humor? who gain weight and never really try to lose it, who treat their husbands more like their child than their lover. I hypothesize that this is the most commonly selected breed of wife by the American man. And most guys seem happy with this kind of woman, or comfortable at least. Why? I don't get it at all. I see it every day. Spending any social time with these kinds of couples is so brutally boring and lifeless. Am I wrong? And if I'm right, what's this all about? In the end, it seems like those guys love being the whipped dum-dums with the demanding wives. Maybe marriage turns a lot of men into frightened babies who just want to be held and fed. That's from Tracy in Malibu. Tracy, I don't disagree with what you're saying. There was a radio talk show host psychiatrist years ago named Dr. Tony Grant, with whom I once worked. She um, was a very big name on the radio in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, she not only wrote a book in which she discussed this, uh, she frequently discussed it on the air, a phenomenon that she called the Madonna Whore Complex. The I and no, it had nothing to do with the singer Madonna. Many people think Madonna is a whore, but that's a whole separate complex. No, no, the Madonna Whore Complex essentially stated that um, men don't want to be with a really sexual woman to be the mother of their babies. And in fact, when they are with the woman who will have their babies, in some cases they are turned off sexually. That the, uh, the women you uh, bang and enjoy the most are the women that would not have your baby, that would not be the mother of your children. And that once you are hooked up with somebody who will have your baby, suddenly you think of them the way you think of your own mom. And therefore you start thinking of them, of them as less sexual. That's, uh, that was her theory, and uh, I don't disagree with that. I think there's a lot of guys out there. And uh, by the way, this is the male form of something we discussed regarding females, which I'll get to in a second. But... Um, I do believe there are a lot of men out there who, uh, after being with every slut and whore in town, they want to marry a nice girl. A nice girl. Someone you can take home to the family. Someone who looks like a nice girl. No tats. No cigarette smoking. No heavy boozing. No drugging. Somebody who likes the missionary position and will uh, not be going out with the girls all the time. Somebody who will be at home and the phone rings, she answers on two rings, bam, there she is. And of course, that girl will never be as good in bed as the 
the wild women you had before. I think that's very common. And it hooks in perfectly with another theory we discussed on this program regarding women. The men that women choose to be their husbands or long-term boyfriends or whatever are the guys who can never measure up to the one-night stands, the vacation sex, the chance meetings with celebrities, rock stars, actors, Hall of Fame ball players, whatever. And, uh, of course, the guy you marry is going to be a more responsible individual, at least in most cases. The guy who will show up in time for dinner. The guy who will come home every night. The guy who won't be the big boozer. The big druggie. By the same token, because he is not manifestly irresponsible or crazy, in bed he tends to be more reasonable as well. Reasonable, thoughtful, boring. And because many women have a very active fantasy life, Women marry Poindexter, but they keep thinking of the, the Swiss ski instructor, or the musician, or the poet, or the guy you met in Cancun for a weekend. Because you never had to see that guy's socks on the floor or the skid marks in his underwear. You never had to uh, pick up after him or never had to hear his opinion about anything. So there was no time for the two of you to have a fight about anything. You never lived at the same address with the guy. Never had any idea what kind of womanizer he was. Anybody who's that good in bed probably had a lot of practice with a lot of people. Poindexter, of course, was home uh, putting money in his IRA and his 401k and was figuring out various uh, logarithms while uh, you were out with the ski instructor and the Hall of Fame ball player. The extreme games champion, the snowboarder, you know what I'm talking about. You do. I think men and women both go through this. Uh, I think that um, men marry uh, chunky, bland, boring chicks because we know nobody else will take them. At least we assume nobody else will take them. We also, uh, if you think about this, we want our children raised by somebody who doesn't smoke like a chimney or smoke weed all day or booze all day. Somebody who's not out till three in the morning or leaves the house for two days and doesn't come back. But of course, all the best sex we ever had were with people who had many, if not all of these traits. But, um, Tracy asks about um, men and why they choose these women. So, guys, I'm going to ask you, are you with a woman like this? Here's how Tracy describes your wife. If you're going to be the caller, this is you. Do you marry someone who is bossy, sexually repressed, motherly, plain-looking, doesn't like sex, minimal sense of humor, Gaining weight with no intention of ever losing it. Woman who treats you like um, her son. Little baby boy. Rather than as an equal partner, as a lover. If you married somebody like this, Tracy wants to know why. Some like us. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Your listeners are like stupidest people I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, by the way, attention advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. It's the Tom Like It Show. <laughs> oh yeah, the Tom Like It Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of our program. All right, guys, have you married somebody like this? Because you're the person I want to call in here. If, call me if you've married somebody who is the following. Preferably all or most of these qualities. Bossy, sexually repressed, motherly, plain looking, no sense of humor, gains weight, 
doesn't really try to lose it, treats you like a, um, more like a child rather than an adult. And you're still with it right now, okay? 1-800-5800-TOM. If you fit those uh, categories, if you've married somebody like that, 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hi here to Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tom. Yes. How are you doing? Do you care? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm doing great. The adult, well, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, you know, hey, Tom, check it out. I'm one of those guys that married one of these girls. Well, I shouldn't say girl, she's my wife. That, you know what? Back in the days, we used to go out, party, you know, have fun. She got pregnant. Um, actually, you know what? She got, I have four boys. And once she had my second boy, everything changed. You have four boys? You've been married how long? I've been married five years. Is that four births? Yes. So you just knock her up every year? No, no, no. How'd you have four boys in five years? What's that? Four boys would be well, 36 well, months of pregnancy in in what, uh, 60 months? No, well, actually, you know what? I had, I had my first my first boy when I was 21. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then you know, then after that, you know, I, I wasn't married to her or anything, but... Once we got married, it all went downhill. Really? And, and how did she change? You know what? Okay, like we used to go out. She used to dress nice, you know, looking real fine, real good. Like I said, after she had my second boy, it all just went to poops. Mm -hmm. I go out now by myself. I go to the bars with my buddies, and I'm like, you know, I come here, I come home at decent, decent time, and... You know, sometimes I get aroused and I say, hey, baby, what's going on? And nothing. I, you know, it's getting to the point where it's like, how can I say? So what you're saying is you didn't marry somebody like this. She became somebody like this. Yeah, exactly. She became like this. You know what? And I try to get in the rhythm, you know, come on, let's do this. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's walk the beach. But I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, you know, Mr. Muscle Man or anything like that. I'm just saying that, you know. I'm just, you know, an average guy, and, you know, and I want my ladies to look, you know, you know, good like I do. I'm not saying, well, I look that good, but I look good, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you know what, she, I cannot get her to do anything. And, and then it's funny how you said that, you know what, she treats me like my boys. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I'm like. You're one of the boys. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, 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 what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know. Ah, uh, it, it's, when I heard you say this, I was like, oh, man, I got to call in. I got to call in. I got to call, call and talk to Tom. And uh, you've had this conversation with her? Oh, yes, many a time. And uh, does she disagree or does she not understand? What's the problem? She, she she understands, but I just, you know what, I don't understand what, um, I, I, I don't know. You know what, I, I really don't know. I really can't say. I can't speak for her. Mm -hmm. I try to do everything I, you know, I even talked to her girlfriends. I tried to get their girlfriends. Come on, Tom, let's go. And still nothing. Deadbeat. Nothing. Really? And it gets to the point where, you know what? What do I do? I'm just like, hey, all right, well, I'll go, I'll go by myself. I hate doing it, but, you know, I'll do it. By the way, just to point out to the boys, your age is what? I'm 28. And you've been with her how long? I've been, you know, we were high school sweethearts. Uh, and uh, boys, this is yeah. why you don't get with the high school sweethearts. Yeah. This, exactly. for those of you thinking of doing what Steve did, this oh. is a little glimpse into the future. This is what happens. Yes. In most cases. Are there exceptions? Sure there are. Don't bother calling in. Most uh -huh. of them are like this. Yeah. And, and you, sound, you sound like a beaten dog, Steve. What's that? You sound like a beaten dog. Well, you know, it gets to the point where, like, I, you know what, really, Tom? I really don't know. You know, I know what to do, but I don't want to, like, you know, I, I, how, how can I say? Um, uh, I, I really don't know what to do. And has she uh, chunked up and everything? Yeah. As a matter of fact, yes. Looks, um, now, the, the letter writer said that the women like this generally look plain compared to what you had in the past. Yeah, oh, 
most definitely way, you know, back when we were in high school and back before I even had my, my, my first two boys, she was looking hot. I mean, she, you know, she, what her chest size was like a 34, you know, she, oh my God, Tom, she was looking, she was looking great. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, like I said, within a couple of years later, things start to, starting to go. Anybody who wants to start popping out kids when she's not married in 21, this is your future. Yes. This is it. You didn't know any better, but this is what I'm trying to tell my boys all the time. I mean, I'm so glad you called in because this is a good glimpse into what they're looking forward to. Right, right. The ones who are hot at 15 and knocking out kids by 20 or 21, they're the ones who by 27 are starting to do chunky. Yes. And yes. starting to wear sweatpants a lot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's funny to say that. To you. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Mm -hmm. Constantly sweatpants and, and one of my baggy shirts. And does she understand uh, that you need sex? You know what? I don't know because you know there's times where you know we're in bed and you know that early morning urge and nothing. I got to go in and take a shower. Have you ever told her that? Of course. Yeah. You have. have you ever told her that if uh, she doesn't get it together that you're out? See, that's what I'm afraid of doing. Why? I, I don't, you know, it's not that I'm afraid to say, you know what, it's for my boys. You know what I mean? I've been there. I don't want to lose. Well, I'm not going to lose my boys, but I just don't. How old is I, the youngest? The youngest is three years old. Three years old. So you only have to do this for another 15 years. Oh, damn it. Yep. 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 Don't worry. When you're 43, you'll get laid again. <laughs> Unless she needs to get knocked up if she's ovulating, maybe she'll get no, that it. No, that's it for me. Yeah. I got, I got fixed. Well, why for? <laughs> so, uh, you know, honestly, yeah. What it, what it was was, I was the last one to carry my name, and that's why I was. You know what? May I ask what your last name is? Estrada. Now, can I tell you something? Uh, you may not know this. Uh -huh. but there are millions of people with that name. Right, right. Starting with <laughs> Eric on down. There's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. You were not the last one with your name. Yes. Your well, name well, is living on. Oh yeah. But in my family, like my family. All like, right. So you had one child before you yeah. got met. Couldn't that have been it? You know what? I thought it was going to be it because you know, honestly, I thought I was like, all right. Just... You thought it was going to be it. I, I I really did. But what, then... you you thought you would never produce sperm again? No, no, I mean, I thought, you know, this is it. This is my last, this is my first and last one right here. Wouldn't you think like a condom would help you uh, determine that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think would happen when you didn't use condoms? I would have another kid. You didn't think that at the time, did you? You thought that wouldn't happen? No, I knew that would happen, but I just thought that, you know what, hey, this is my lady. And I thought, you know what, this is it. I'll see your lady now. And there's nothing you can do about it. Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Blackie Show. 5 800 Tom. That's the number here. And we continue with your phone calls. We are here uh, trying to find out if uh, you have, uh, out of who you dated in the past, married a bossy, sexually repressed, motherly woman. Plain looking. Little sense of humor, chunky, and never tries to lose the excess weight. Treats you like her child rather than her equal. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. How are you? I'm okay. That's great, because I'm not. <laughs> You're talking about me. Oh boy. Yeah, well, I, I don't I don't want to repeat everything, sound redundant, but everything you've listed she is. Well, she's not plain, she is pretty. But she's just good lord. Uh, she's married to the church, for one. You know, she's on her knees twice a day, and it ain't for me. Now, did that uh, just start after you got married? You know, it started after the kids. Uh-huh. Well, she's been in the church, but it's gotten stronger since she's got the kids and everything. And 
You know, she's sexually repressed, you know. And she says that she wants it, and I know it's a bunch of crap just to cover up, you know. You know, I, I should have take, I should have taken all the red flags when they came up, you know. Any woman that doesn't believe in sex before marriage don't think a whole hell of a lot about it afterwards. No, you, you know, never, ever, you never want to be with a woman who doesn't believe in sex before. She wasn't a virgin when I married her. I would have dumped her because I had a couple more on the side. They were put out, so I moved on to her. But uh, did she uh, hold off until you married her? Oh, 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 no. You with the sex? No, no. I mean, I, I got it after about a month. After about a month of dating? Oh, with her. Yeah, okay. But but after being married, you know, it's like she doesn't have time. And, of course, instead of she doesn't come out and say no, she just puts on her birth control clothing. You know, the old moo-moo she wears to bed? The moo-moo, the big, long the, flannel shirt. The thing thing. That, it's, it's, it's like one step below a burqa. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I mean, she, she doesn't like it because I drink. She doesn't like my friends coming over. She used to drink with me. She won't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. So so now I'm taking over. I'm drinking more than that, you know? Yeah. But uh, you're, you know, you're protesting. Yeah, she thinks I'm an alcoholic. One night I got drunk, and she called me an alcoholic, so I called her cathaholic. She thought that was, oh, that's real funny. I said, well, pretty good for a drunk, huh? Oh, boy. You know, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's horrible. I mean, what can I do? I mean, what I want to do is, like, be a substitute teacher for you today for some of your listeners and tell them, you know, if you're headed down that aisle, back up. Put it in reverse. Go the other way. Run. Run for the hills. Don't do it. If your woman leaves you, goes for somebody else, don't don't go for her. Just leave her behind. It ain't worth it, man. There's plenty of women out there. Yeah, don't uh, ever chase a chick who has screwed around on you. Don't do it. Yeah, no. I mean, the thing is, is I've got, I could get so many of them right now. It's so easy. It's so easy. Anywhere I go, they start talking to me. That's no. because you don't have the stink of death on you, like uh, all the sweaty little poindexters who are out there going, Would you mind dancing with me? You know? Oh, you don't ask, you tell. Well, yeah, you're, you're not looking for it, and so it's easy to get. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is why I tell the single guys not to approach women, not to try opening lines on them or offer to buy them drinks. Come to the bar to drink like you do. You know, I've, I've learned this. I just walk up and talk to them. I'll throw a couple of one-liners. I'll do a few impressions for them, and they feel at ease with me. And the next thing you know, we're talking, I'll just, I can say, you know, you know what, give me, your, give me your cell number. You like Italian food? I know a great place. Bang, you got it. It doesn't give them the option to say no. So you've uh, gone out to dinner with women and more. Of well, well, no, no, I got the numbers, you know, just just to see if I could do it. Oh, so you haven't done anything with the numbers yet? Well, no, no. I'd like to. It just, I, I guess it's kind of a tease for myself. But I don't know. I mean, Are you kind of ramping up to leave? Is that what you're doing? You know, I, I, I would like to. <laughs> I'd like to. You know, it's. What do I got to go home to every day? I come, I come to a job that sucks. I go to, home to a wife that doesn't, you know, and it's just there's nothing that, it's nothing to look forward to. You, these guys who want to get married are stupid. So you're in that category of just kill me. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. I can't self-terminate. So, you know, somebody else do it for me, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. What would you do in my position? Well, you got divorced four times. Yeah, believe me. I'd be ow, wow, wow. I wouldn't mind divorcing her four times. I've only married her once, but she's just to make yeah. it final. I mean, in California, you'll get all the gun to your head to pay child support and everything, but... Uh, I know, exactly. But you know what? You'll be, in your little, you'll be in your little studio apartment, and you'll be the happiest man on earth. Yeah, they'll keep the house, and I'll live in a cardboard box somewhere with a sign in my hand, we'll work for beer. Yeah, there you go. And you know what? You'll probably be happier. Yeah, well, that's what my friends tell me. My friend tells me, get out. He's 38. He's never been married. And I, I wish I would have listened to you 20-something years ago. See, and I, I just met you four and a half minutes ago, and I'm saying the same things your friends are saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I listen to this all the time. I, I mean, I'm hearing it, and I know, I'm know, i knowing it, but it's like I'm kind of like, I don't know. I, if I get out, what do I do? Where do I go? Well, you're going to end up in one of those uh, apartments with the big now renting flag on the front. Yep, and I'm going to come out to my carport and find my car busted into every morning. Oh, no, 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 not necessarily. But I won't have a car. She'll get that, too. That's exactly right. But, you know, one of these places with a pool and a sauna or a hot tub. And it's kind of like a little Melrose Place action going on there. And I'm telling you, one of these Oakwood apartments or something, I'm telling you, there's, uh, there is a future. I've been divorced. You know, she does take all the fun out of dysfunctional. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I just... John, if I felt suicidal like you seem to be, I'd be <laughs> out the door. Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten to that point yet. It's just, it's just like if I get out the door and... I've tried it a few times. She's, she's physically stopped me. I mean, throwing my stuff out of the back of the truck. and Well, that, that's why you need to, like, have a game plan. Yeah. And the way you do this is you arrange for a little apartment for yourself. You arrange the, even if you need rented furniture or whatever, you arrange that. You have the place ready to go. 
Uh, you uh, install your phone and turn on your gas, electricity, and right. have a functioning place. And then one day, you just turn the car around. Instead of going home, you go to your apartment. But the thing is, she gets her nose in all the finances. And if I do that, and it's, say it takes a couple of weeks' time, she gets a bank statement. She pours through them. Yeah, well, that's why you may need a safe deposit box or a separate bank account or something like that. Hmm, yeah, but then i got to put money in it. She's wondering where that money goes. Oh, she's, she'd make a great sleuth or a detective. Oh, man. She goes through, she goes through the uh, credit card balance. Why did you go to this restaurant on this date and spend 40-something bucks? Who are you with? Mm hmm Oh, good Lord. Uh-huh. Good Lord, it's horrible. And if you're lucky, she'll catch you. <laughs> you know, I actually thought about that. I was doing karaoke the other night, and the uh, hostess was very well endowed, and uh, she was calling me eye candy. And I'm thinking, you got 38 double Ds, and you're calling me eye candy? Boy, oh, boy. You know, this is what I'm saying. And I didn't ask for a number I should have. Put your candy up against my candy. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Are you hearing that? The Tom Lightning Show. Tom Lightning Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Al on the Tom Lightning Show. Hello. How are you doing? All right, Al. Hey, man. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller here. Thank you. Um, sitting here listening to the radio, listening to all these guys. Um, I'm 24. I've been with this girl going on four years. I've been engaged with her for about two years now. She's 10 years older than I am, Tom. She's 34. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, by the way, my dad, he's the one that put me onto the show and I'm very grateful for that because I've learned a lot from you, sir. Mm hmm. Um, but obviously I haven't been a, a good listener because I haven't done what you say. Uh, she's first of all, I don't, I don't get laid anymore, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a young, good-looking guy. I don't even feel I, I should beg to the woman that I've been with for four years. Why would you marry somebody who won't have sex with you? I, I don't know. I don't know, Tom. I feel, you know. Don't you deserve to have sex at 24 years old. Don't you deserve that? Yeah, I should be. Oh, I, so why would you marry somebody like that? Why would you even consider it? Because, you know, well. Like, I'm listening to this other, the gentleman on before, you know, how he said, you know, he's kind of, you know, afraid to leave because what she'll do to him. That's how I feel, you know. Yeah, but you're not married and you don't have kids, do you? No, I don't. All right, so she can't do anything to you. Yeah, well, she she's pretty violent, you know. She's already, like, just, like, cracked one of my ribs, you know. Really? And did you call 911? No, I didn't call 911. Why not? You know, because I guess I'm an, an idiot. You're, you're a pussy. I guess pretty no much. No wonder your dad had you tuned in. He's a real man. What's the deal with you? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm being a pussy. You know. And, and by the way, Al, or did you have a successful career or anything? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Well, I'm a chef. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a princess chef. All right. And so you have a future at uh, top-notch restaurants. Is that yeah. what you do? Yeah. So uh, don't you think you deserve better than a chick who's ten years older than you are? Yeah, well, she's not, you know, like, she's 10 years and she looks 10 years. She's good-looking. Yeah, but, pal, yeah, yeah, okay. She's 34 today. Right. When you're 30, she's 40. Yeah. Don't you deserve better than that? I, I guess. I when do. you're 35, she's 45? You think she's going to look that good then? Probably not. That's when you're going to look 15 years younger than her. Yeah, and, and that's probably when I'll be spending a lot more money, you know, to get her fixed up. You know, she's already asking for money for she's asking Botox. for money for Botox? Are you kidding? Haven't you heard what we say about uh, getting all these treatments for chicks you're with? Mm. Boob jobs, uh, face lifts, uh, ass lifts. Have you heard what we said about that? No. They use these surgeries to attract the next sucker after you. Mm-hmm. Who, I mean, look. You hooked up with her without yeah. Botox, right? Right. So why does she need to do these things to herself? So she can get attention from other men. That's right. Don't you understand? Yeah, it sounds, sounds pretty logical. I mean, she's got your attention, even though she won't have sex with you. So let's review. Won't have sex with you. Wants to get surgery so other men will look at her. Do you see a pattern here? Yeah, she's always... Bitching, man. Always bitching at me, Tom, about anything. Mm -hmm. About anything. It's like, if I work too much, why do you work too much? I hate that. Stop working. You work too much. If I don't work enough, why do you sit on your ass all the time? You don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Get up. Go to work. It's like, you know, 
I work, okay? I pay my bills. I pay the rent. You pay her bills, too, Alba. Exactly. I pay her bills. And why are you doing that? Well, because I figure, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I live here with her. We live together. I'm the man of the house, you know. <laughs> but you're not getting any of the benefits of being the man of the house. That's true. I'm not getting any of that except me. When I'm paying, they're laying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. And then she's not laying. Poet? I didn't even know it. What? Yeah, she's not laying, really. You know, maybe once in a while. Like... Well, what are you paying for, exactly? Crap. <laughs> nothing. You're getting nothing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to step out of this, Tom. You know, it's not I'm afraid, like, I'm afraid I'm not going to get anybody. I'm afraid of what she will do. Pal, um, do you own a house with her? No. Uh, you have an apartment? Yeah. When is the lease up? Uh, the lease, it's... it's, it's, it's month to no, month? Month, yeah. Perfect. What you are going to do is you, I'm going to tell you to do what the other guy, uh, what I told the other guy, you're going to get an apartment. You're going. Yeah. You're not going to move the same day. You're going to have it all set up so that when you get there, it's going to feel like home. Right. Don't even buy furniture. You're going to rent furniture. There's a number of places where you can rent furniture. Okay. Fill your apartment with furniture. Hook up the electricity, the gas, everything. And then at the end of the next month of your lease, instead of driving home, you drive to your apartment and never come back. And don't even tell her where you are. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's not, you know, I could do that, but, what, you know, what about, like, feelings? I'll screw her, then, huh? Feelings? She's screwing you over, pal. Wake up. Yeah. She's kicking your ass. Yeah, she is. She's kicking your goddamn ass. Well, feelings. What does that say about you, that you love a woman who treats you like crap? Well, I, I've been with her for years, you know. She's... Because you're an idiot. That's why you've been with her for four years. I figure, you know, maybe she... Yeah, things are so bad. No, she will... Pal. Yeah. You're not even married yet. I know. Have I'm... you heard what I say about marriage? The first three months, it's the best it's ever gonna get. This is the best it's ever gonna get. Do you understand? Yep. Do you really understand? Yeah, I understand. Meaning it will get worse. Yeah. The minute she has you signed to a contract, the minute she gets her claws into your bank account legally... Oh, God. You're dead. Dead. I'm your dead. future is dead, your career is dead, and then there'll be plenty holes in the condoms. Oh, uh, let, let me guess, are you using condoms? No, she's on birth control. Yeah, that's what she told you, meaning the answer is no. Yeah. That means she's totally in control the day she decides to forget using the pill or whatever she's using. You're dead. And she's already kind of threw that at me before. Well, pal, what, I don't even know you. I've known you for six minutes and 36 seconds, and I already know what's going on at your house. C can't you tell? It's red flags all over the place. How many things did I tell you that you said, oh, yeah, that's already happening? How many? Everything. You can't even count. Everything. So don't you believe the rest of the stuff I'm telling you? Yeah, I do. Then you have to get your ass out of there. All right, Tom. Can you, can you... No, 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 no. We're not done with you yet. All right. <laughs> Kathy, what did you want to say here to Al? Hi, Al. Listen to me. I'm screaming at you on my phone. I've got a cell phone. I hope I don't get disconnected. Listen, do you have any kids with this woman? No. Girl, what are you doing there? Oh, my God. I bet that, you know, you sound like you're an attractive guy. She has whipped you so bad that you think that you're not going to get anyone else. Trust me, you will. You will. They, these women probably beat these poor guys down, and she probably verbally abuses you, telling you you're a loser, you can't do anything. You've got a job. You know, it's not like you can't pay. Do you have, do you have any bills or any debts that you need her to pay off for you or something? He's paying no. the bills. He's paying them. No, I'm paying <laughs> Don't, don't anymore. Do you have any joint accounts with her or anything? Not at all. Then what are you doing there? Listen, listen. Is she hot, like super, super hot? No, that's the thing. You know? 34 needs Botox. But yeah, she's not, I mean, she's not super, super hot. I mean, I have pretty girls, you know, like very pretty girls, actually, you know, flirt with me, you know. And then, you know, I'm like, you know, my friends, and they, they'll be like, oh, you're just a pussy. Why don't you go get her number or something at least? And I don't feel like that, you know, because I, I don't want to, you know, cheat on her, you know, and go do that. You know? No, you'd rather go home and get no sex at all. Kathy, uh, hang on a second. Al, you two. Uh, Rudy, what did you want to say to Al here? Hey, hey, bro, you are a pussy. Come on, man. Get a hold of yourself. What?
34 year old, you're 20 something, dude. There's so many women out there. Who do you think far, dude? With a 34, you're paying bills. Come on, man. Ow, ow. Look, I want to tell you something. Like the last thing that you need right now is for people to be telling you like what you should do when you're a loser. Like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I don't think you're a loser. I just, you know what you should do. Thanks. <laughs> these girls, these girls, okay, that they flirt with you, you know, dude, flirt back. Okay? Get some numbers and take them to your new studio apartment, baby. Some like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred top. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. You know the definitions of the word slut and the word bitch, right? Uh, no. A slut is anyone who's had more sex than I've had. <laughs> you know what a bitch is? What's that? A bitch is a slut who'll sleep with everybody but me. The Tom Like It Show. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. A call our comment line. Area code 310. 842-9592. The Tom Likas Show.